You are now tuned into Shotgun Sports USA. Powered by Winchester. Recorded in the U.S. And streaming all over the world. We talk to shotgun shooters from all disciplines, championship winning coaches, gun clubs, world class target setters, vendors, and industry leading companies that fuel the sport. If you are into clay target sports, you are at the right place for insider information from some of the best in the world every single week. Remember to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and connect with us on social media. You can also catch our episodes on ShotgunSportsUSA.com. Being a brand name in the clay target industry, Rick Hemingway has said, Have you ever noticed almost all major sporting events are being run by pro-matic traps? Think about that statement for a minute. He's right, and you may want to consider that before making your next purchase. Rick is the largest Promatic dealer specializing in individual and commercial trap sales. Rick provides skeet, trap, five stamp, and sporting clays, designs, installs, and service. He also offers accessories such as solar panels, wireless release systems, as well as the hottest item on the market, the Claybot by Renair Products. Visit www.backwoodsquailclub.com or give him a call at 843-546-546. 1466. The Double D Foundation, launched by Daniel Defense Executive Vice President Cindy Daniel, is a product of a vision. Like all charitable organizations, the Double D Foundation has a purpose to protect the Second Amendment by growing the number of Americans involved in shooting sports who understand the fundamentals of firearm safety and who share the core belief that the Second Amendment defends the rest. For more information, visit the DoubleDFoundation.org. Castellani shooting vests are manufactured in Italy and internationally recognized by elite shooters as the most popular, lightweight shooting vests on the market. Castellani vests are especially known for their Italian styling and superior craftsmanship and quality, making them a vest of choice for all shooting disciplines. Ultimate Shooting Accessories is the exclusive supplier of Castellani vests in the United States. Visit ultimateshootingaccessories.com for more information and to place your order. On the show with me today, I have a 2020 Olympian in women's trap. And like many women who compete at this high level, she started small. Her initiation into the world of shooting was at her local 4-H club, beginning at the age of 12. Fast forward, and she is now standing among some of the greatest in the world. Please welcome my guest, Maddie Bruneau. Maddie, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining me. I know you're extremely busy, and I'm, I'm glad you took some time out of your busy schedule to talk to me. It's not a problem. I definitely welcome all distractions because the biggest event is about to happen to me, so distractions are a good thing if I can get myself prepared to deal with them over there. Well, so. I'm going to distract you a little bit so <laughs> we can get into this, but I want to start out from the beginning. I know you're from Waterford, Wisconsin. And yep, that's he- correct. And you're headed to the 2020 Olympics. And, yep. <laughs> and this journey all started when you were 12 years old. So how did you get involved in clay target shooting? So I got involved actually through my father who kind of grew up hunting from his father and from his uncles and stuff like that. It was kind of like a family thing to go hunting. So when I was about 10, my dad actually like took me hunting and like kind of let me experience what shotguns were all about through turkey hunting. And I kind of liked it. It was kind of fun. And then when I was 12 years old, we started doing 4-H and I started to actually get into the clay target disciplines. And 
it was pretty funny because I had never shot anything similar like that. I was just shooting still targets and now we're going to moving targets. And I think I shot a six out of 25 in American Trap on my first round ever. And I turned around and went, this is the best thing ever. This is so much fun. So my dad was like, all right, this is pretty cool. So we continued with that for a little bit and then I joined a local high school team as an eighth grader and shot the SUTP for a while and into high school and I found the other disciplines known as skeet, sporting clays, double strap, handicap, you name it and I was shooting everything under the moon clay target wise. It was when I was a sophomore in high school that I found Bunker Trap. My dad actually found it and kind of sent me to this camp out in Colorado where I stayed at the Olympic Training Center and I kind of got introduced to the sport. And I think I shot like a nine out of 25 my first time around. And it, I, I found it was a very humbling sport and it was something that I wanted to see if I was any good at down the road. So we kind of started training here and there and then down the road Wisconsin built Wisconsin built its first bunker so we I was able to train up there and it just kind of progressed from there I guess yes so in 2014 you attended an SETP development camp which was held yep. it was held at the Olympic and Paralympic training center which is in Colorado Springs what was that camp for it was basically just to kind of introduce me to the international discipline of bunker trap. I signed up specifically to try out bunker trap because you could sign up for bunker trap or skeet at that camp. And I just, I really wanted to try bunker trap. And I was one of, I believe it was like 30 some kids selected to go out there and train. And we were coached by people who were actually um, on team USA and even miss, Shari and Mr. Jay Waldron were out there and they were helping out with the event and they were helping get us into it. So a lot of um, people that I had met through the SCTP were actually out there and uh, trying to enjoy the international side and try, try to see, you know, what it's all about because none of us had ever um, experienced it before. It was really a beginning camp just to kind of introduce people into the Olympic disciplines. Is that what, what kids need to do now if they want to get involved with something like this is go to one of these camps? It, I mean, it's definitely recommended. There's not from what I've seen, there's not a lot out there other than what USA Shooting is doing now. They're doing a lot of camps that kind of introduce kids to it. And even Hillsdale Shooting Sports Center, which is where I'm currently training right now, they are putting a lot of camps together. Hillsdale just built four brand new bunkers. They're really trying to get kids to see that there is more to um clay targets than just American sports. This is actually an Olympic event. A lot of people don't know that, you know, shooting is actually an Olympic event, especially the clay target sports. Um, I, I know a lot of people that know rifle and pistol are an Olympic event, but they don't really know that shotgun's actually a sport as well. So it, the camps are definitely a good idea for kids. Don't get me wrong. It's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to get introduced to the sport and it's a great way to build connections within our um, Olympic community that we have, but you could definitely just go to a range that has one, try it out for yourself or even reach out to anyone on team USA. Anyone's willing to help get kids, especially younger kids into the sport because eventually we're going to get too old to shoot it. So we definitely want the next generation to be prepared to take our place. That's right. That's right. So your experience in shooting in these organizations, how was that and how do you think they helped you to get to where you are now? I, I definitely feel that um, they helped me get to where I am. I, the 4-H introduced me to it from the start. The SCTP kind of helped me find uh, the other disciplines of skeet and stuff. And then my dad was the kind of was the one that actually found the Olympic side of it at um, when he discovered the camp was available. So they definitely helped me along the way as I grew in the sport of bunker. USA Shooting has been such a help to me with training wise, uh, getting me anywhere I need to go and just basically just helping me both physically and emotionally as I, as I kind of started to progress in their levels of teams, uh, with the junior national and national and all those teams, they, they definitely helped me a ton. Jay Waldron has been such a blessing as well as his wife, Miss Shari. I, 
I definitely could not have done anything that I've done recently without them. Did you also shoot in college? Yes, I did. I went to my freshman year. I went to Simpson College in Indianola, Iowa, and I was coached under the uh, coach who is now uh, coaching at Concordia, Nebraska. He, his name is Scott Munyo. He was my first ever true like coach coach, like one who truly built a personal relationship with me and tried a bunch of different stuff with me and basically was working on my mental game, working on pushing me past my comfort levels of shooting and trying to get me to think outside the box a little bit. He definitely gave me my edge when it comes to the mental side of this sport. He is just a blessing in disguise. And when I was a sophomore in college, he actually, the program was getting defunded at Simpson college and it was going to be, marked down from an actual sport there to a club sport and I was going to lose a lot of scholarship money. So I, uh, Mr. Munoz actually called me while I was at the junior Olympics in Colorado shooting you shooting a USA shooting event. And he said he was switching schools. You know, you could come follow me and come to Concordia or, you know, you can go somewhere else. It's completely your choice. And of course he tried to persuade me to go to Concordia, but I was actually recruited by the it's now known as the university of tennessee southern they just switched but it was formerly known as martin methodist where mr chad wittenberg coached he recruited me when he found out that i was looking for a different school and i actually finished my uh, bachelor's degree there competing for martin methodist in tennessee so i i was the part of the 75 percent of kids that transferred in college which i never thought i would be a part of but it was definitely a journey what was your degree in i majored in biology with a biomedical science emphasis uh, mainly pre-veterinary because i would like to go on to graduate school and get my doctorate degree as well as my doctor of veterinary medicine uh license so i kind of Basically, I have a big major in biology, but it's biomedical sciences with a chemistry minor. That sounds way too complicated for me. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you work as well as shoot or is shooting your full-time job right now? I would love to say that shooting is my full-time job. I am actually one of the few Olympians that you'll know not shooting because, of course, a lot of the shooting Olympians have jobs. Uh, but I am one of the few Olympians across the whole Team USA spectrum that has not one but technically two full-time jobs. And I say full-time is where I work one full-time and then the other one I kind of just work, you know, as I can, basically. So my first full-time job, I just started back in March of this year and I work at a company called ST Genetics. It's up in Watertown, Wisconsin. And basically I am a lab tech where we produce sex sorted semen straws for um, cattle and we um, harvest the semen ourselves. We make sure it's it's going to pass all of our tests. We then put it on sorting machines. So it sorts for X chromosomes or Y if we're doing a mail that day. It depends on what the customer wants. I am actually the one that takes the samples off of the sorting machines. I spin them down to the right concentrations. I put them into the straws once they meet all my requirements that I have to make sure they meet and then I get to play with liquid nitrogen and freeze them down to their sleeping temperatures before they're shipped off to their uh, to the customers so it, it's a pretty neat job I love it because I would like to go on to do something in the genetic field with cattle or livestock at some point it's just when when it will happen with my Olympic endeavors and everything else going on in my life I don't know but I would like to do that at some point. And then my other job that I do on the side is I've been working for a farm that's right next to my house for the last eight years of my life. And I just, I love the environment too much to kind of let go. So anytime my boss needs help, I'm just kind of always willing to be there for him. I've, I've been around so much. I, I know how to work all the equipment. I know how to basically kind of be there and like kind of, 
supervise the farm if he doesn't have to be there i know what how to get stuff ready for markets and to ship up to the store so i just i really like that i have so much freedom there that i just i'm, I'm not willing to let go yet so I, I go there whenever i have some free time on my hands yeah that's interesting both of them sound <laughs> uh the first one sounds like i wouldn't want to do that the second one sounds interesting so uh, <laughs> now when did you start shooting usa sanctioned competitions so I started shooting them full time. I, I shot my first USA shooting national match in the summer of 2016, but my first year of actually fully shooting them was in 2017. So my first selection match ever that I competed in for USA shooting was spring 2017 in Fort Benning, Georgia at the Army Marksmanship Base. Okay. So it hasn't been that long since I fully started doing it, but I did. I picked up the sport of bunker in 2014. Yeah. How many shooters are competing in one of these events? A selection match, I guess you call it. Yeah, it can range uh, for the guy's side. It's huge. There's, at least, there's usually at least 80 or 90 competitors on the guy's side. For the girls, it's, it's a little bit less just because there aren't a lot of females that do this sport but fortunately we've seen a lot of interest from the female population that wants to get into this sport which is awesome so we have anywhere from i want to say 40 to 60 athletes in the female side there was there's a lot more when it's like part one or like there's a lot of stuff on the line. So like if there's world cup selections or stuff on the line. So for Olympic trials part one, I think we had like upwards of high fifties, 60 females. But then at part two, there was only, I think like 45, maybe athletes competing for the, um, in the part two trials, which you had to compete in both to make the Olympic team. So it could have been, you know, schooling or something going on with people's lives, you know, for part two, but it, it happens. So well, there's not a ton of competitors, but definitely on the guy's side. So tell me how these, how these work. I mean, you've got, you just said part one, part two, and you had to be at both. How do you, how do you earn a spot on the team? So to earn a spot on currently to earn a spot on the team, you basically, they, they kind of change the rules for the match given. So for example, the junior Olympics that just happened about a week and a half ago, they were held here at the John A. Halter Shooting Sports Center in Hillsdale, Michigan, and USA Shooting held an event earlier in this year in Kerrville, Texas, that selected for a junior world team. So that was their selection match for basically any junior that wanted to go to, I believe the competitions are in Lima, Peru, and there's another uh, World Cup or World Championship later this year for juniors. So they held that match specifically to select for their junior world team for later this year. So for the junior Olympics, most times you'd have junior national team places available to earn at the, at this event. But because they already selected for their junior world team, which basically puts them on the junior national team automatically, he, um, Jay Waldron and Shari Waldron basically only gave away junior squad uh, positions, which is basically just a level below or jun a level below junior nationals. Uh, just because um, you can't name you know a ton of kids to the national team, otherwise um, the resources like kind of you know aren't being distributed even evenly, and then the coaches can't you know help out that many kids. So um, there's only so many spots given a year, and it depends on the year, and it depends on what we're competing for. So there's been a lot of selection matches where they were selecting for a world championship team. Then there was a selection match where it was a world cup team. And it just kind of depends on what the program states. And they release their programs probably two months in advance. At least they try to. And for the, this Olympics, because I didn't compete in the 2016 trials for the 2016 Olympics, they did two parts. So, Part one was held in the fall of 2019 in Kerrville, Texas. It was a 250 target match and then a finals, but the final only added points to your score. So you shot the 250 targets and I shot a 224 and the top girl shot a 230, I believe. Then we went, then top six girls went into finals 
And then if you placed first in finals, you got three points added to your score. If you placed second, you got two points. If you got third, you got one point, and then no one else got points after that. So then coming out of part one, uh, you had first, second, third, and so on just by how you shot the match and what points you got added to your score. Then we had the second part held in the spring of 2020, right before the pandemic hit, and it was held in Tucson, Arizona, and that was another 250 target competition where you took that score plus your score, and if you got finals points from fall, you added them together, and that was your position going into finals. So then top six went into finals. I was bib number two, and I believe Kaylee, my Olympic team member, was bib number one. And it was a different final setup than normal. We shot something called a, a super final, which all six girls shoot all 50 targets. And then depending on how many you hit, that's the points added to your overall score. So I believe in total I shot a 444 out of 500 targets, and then I shot an additional 37 out of 50 targets in the final um, to make the Olympic team. I believe I was four points ahead of third place in the end. Wow. That's complicated. <laughs> Glad you can keep up yes. with all that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you, you were on the junior national team. And yes. you actually skipped the national team and went straight to the Olympic team. Yep. Basically, I, I made the junior world team in the spring of 2018 for Korea. And then I basically was on the national team and or the junior national team. Sorry, excuse me. And then and then basically that kind of already came from making the junior world team. So I was already on the junior national team. So I kind of just remade it again for that year. And then I kind of just skipped over the national team. I never actually made the straight national team for USA shooting. I made a World Cup travel team, but I never actually like was on the national national team. So, yeah, I kind of went from junior to straight to Olympian. <laughs> is that is that normal or is that not normal? It, it kind of depends on the shooter and okay. it kind of depends on what competitions come your way. You know, I mean, you can be a junior shooter and just go and shoot the junior Olympics um, that we just had. And then you could have the Olympic trials come up and just, you know, make the team. It, it kind of depends on the shooter. I, I, I may have just not attended as many or as many events as I should have. And I maybe could have made the national team earlier, but it, I guess it's just kind of how it worked out. Yeah. So when did you become an official member of USA shooting? An official member of USA shooting. I joined my first ever team was the world championship team that I made in the spring of 2018. I shot a 250 target match in Tucson, Arizona and the top three junior girls. And it was my last year being a junior were selected to go compete at world championships in Changwon, Korea, which was held that fall in 2018. And that was probably the neatest country I've ever been to by far competing. It was such an experience and being that being my first team, it was definitely a huge thing because, you know, for a whole year, I was just attending USA shooting events, kind of getting to know my, the ins and outs of the competition, getting to know the people there. And then all of a sudden a year later, I made the junior world team and it was like, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden it was like, I had to get my passport. I had to get all these documents. I had to get ready to travel because uh, they took the juniors over, I think two months, uh, two months or a month later, they took them over to Italy for kind of a warm up for Korea because a lot of the juniors that made the team haven't ever traveled, including myself at that point. So it was, it was kind of, kind of an experience when I first made the team. So you you think about this for a minute now. To date, what's been your proudest moment in shooting? And we're not talking about the Olympics. It kind of changed. So that moment actually kind of changed recently. So a lot of people joke and say that Italy is like a second home to me because I found a lot of success competing in Italy. So when I was, when I made the junior world team, they sent us to Perpetto, Italy for a kind of a little grand prix warm up for juniors. And that was my first ever international trip. 
I had never even met any of the competitors over there. Didn't even know like what to do, what to expect for my first trip flying with my firearm. It was kind of just a heck of an experience to say the least. And I ended up winning the the match for my individual lady event, the mixed team event, which I partnered up with Dale Royer to compete in that. And then I we also took third for our women's trap team. So it was my first international event and I won my own, I won my own individual event. And then I also took two more medals home, which was definitely an experience having no experience of that prior to going. So that was probably my proudest moment to date when it was like, wow, I can kind of do this. You know, it was kind of like me having an aha moment. Like this is kind of, I think what I'm meant to do in life. I don't know, but we're going to kind of see how it rolls the next couple of years. And then recently I just went to Lenato, Italy. And I guess that kind of either matches my past Italy experience or tops it because that was only my second World Cup ever, and I shot my personal best score of 118 out of out of 125 overseas. I my previous score to that was 100 out of 125, so that was a huge accomplishment for me, knowing that I can perform well in a high pressure match situation, which I've never I've been put into before but definitely not right before an even bigger event later to come in my life. So, And then I went into finals, and I was competing against past world champions, past World Cup gold medalists. I was competing against basically the ladies I'm going to see in Tokyo, and I ended up coming out with my first World Cup medal being a silver, and it was just insane to get that experience right before I go to Tokyo since I've never had that match pressure scenario ever before being it being competing against girls that already have accomplished resumes and I'm just there shooting my second ever world cup not really you know knowing what I'm doing and it was at such a beautiful range in Lenato I've I've never shot there so it it was just such an experience to be a part of I bet that place is nice just you know Italy in in general you know it's I've yeah never been yes I'd like to go <laughs> You should definitely go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's kind of talk about how you've prepared yourself for the Olympics. What what kind of practice routine have you been following to get yourself ready to go to Tokyo? So for me, I've never really been one to go to the range constantly and just pound out targets. It it never happened to me when I was in college. It didn't happen before Italy. I just, I don't want to burn myself out before I actually step on the range in Tokyo. So I've been training a lot more quality than quantity recently. So when I came back from Italy, my first ever training this year was I went out to Tucson, Arizona, actually, um, before Italy in January. And then I kind of shot some matches that were kind of local here, just kind of getting more competitive because that's what I need more of is more competition experience than training. I need more like high pressure situations just to prepare myself for the pressure and basically the nerves I'm going to be feeling in Tokyo. So that's kind of what I was more after. I was, I'm really trying to put myself in high pressure situations just so when I go over there, it doesn't make me panic. It doesn't make me frustrated. I'm just kind of prepared to deal with it. So a lot of times when, especially when I'm training, especially if like Derek mine or Brian Burroughs or any of the army marksmanship unit is there with me, I'm kind of like, can we shoot like a shoot off or finals? Or like, if they offer it, like I'm one of the first ones to say, yeah, I want to do it because competing against them definitely not freaks me out, but definitely puts a level of pressure that I don't get competing against other people in the nation because technically when I compete, I just compete against girls and I definitely feel pressure from them, but it's nothing of the pressure that I feel when I compete against successful males because they have, they definitely dominate the sport and can consistently shoot higher scores normally than females, but we can definitely compete with them as well. So when I compete against them, I feel more, I guess, more pressure to be 
in tune with myself so that I can perform to my ability, which is better hopefully than their ability at the time. Right. So I, I've really been seeking those intense pressure moments. And I've also kind of been training a little bit outside the box, kind of finding my boundaries with the sport. Like where can I hold my eyes to be successful? Where can I, can I break the target, you know, 10 meters further than it's flying when I broke it before? Um, can I hold my gun in different spots? Can I move my feet in this way? Just kind of finding what works for me and kind of expanding my range of what works so that when I go overseas, I can kind of play with it and find what makes me feel at home at that range in that specific time. So that that's truly been what I've been chasing during all my training and all my competitions that I've been attending to prepare. You brought up that, that men typically shoot higher scores than women. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think, I personally think it has something to do with the female hormones that rage through us on a constant basis because I mean, anything can affect vision and definitely dehydration is one of them. And no matter what I can be as hydrated as possible and it'll be like, I'll shoot five targets in a row, have no problem, hit them all. And then it's like, I missed two in a row and have completely no idea what I did. And it's not like I changed anything, but something was different that time. And I don't, it, I just, I don't really understand what the science behind it is, but I definitely think that we have a disadvantage in that aspect because there are a lot of female shooters, especially like Kim Rohde and Amber English, especially who's on the Olympic team that, and Ashley Carroll, who is the world championship uh, or world champion in ladies trap last year, we definitely can put up scores. We definitely can beat men. I just think that some days we have a disadvantage for different reasons. And I definitely think that hormones play a lot into that because we, you know, one day we can have super high amounts of it and other days, you know, nothing. So it, there's just certain things that I think, you know, why they can shoot higher than us more consistently, but we can definitely take them when every, when the stars are in line and we're definitely proportional performing at our best we can definitely take them yeah do you have a strategy or some sort of plan when shooting in something as large as maybe the olympics and what i mean is do you have like a routine that you follow is there some kind when you get up there is there something that you do every time um so the only thing that i repeat it that i tend to repeat every time is it's called like it's called a pre-shot routine and a lot of shooters are familiar with it. And it's basically just, you know, what you do and what you think before you step into your station. So it's kind of like just mentally and physically preparing your body to be successful before you have to be successful. And it, I don't, unless I need to do something routinely that that's the only thing that's repetitive for me. Like I don't need to drink a special drink. I don't need to wear a specific clothing or shoes or like have a favorite hat or anything like that. So it's definitely nothing like that for me. So it's basically just running my pre-shot routine to the best of my ability, making sure that I prepare my body to be successful when it needs to be. And then as soon as I call pull, just I, I like to say let her eat because I like to let my gun eat targets. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but yeah, I asked Derek this same question. I'm about to ask you when I did a podcast with him and it was, how did the cancellation or postponement of the, of the Olympics affect you? Did it take some, some of the excitement out of it? It, I mean, it kind of, it did in the fact of it wasn't right around the corner. So that was kind of the excitement for me that went away. Like it was kind of like, I have to spread my excitement out for a year and a half now, instead of just four months. It, that was kind of what it was like for me. Other than that, I kind of took a step back and was like, this is probably a good thing because with a pandemic going on, even I'm even still the Olympics aren't going to be run the way they normally are. But I, I just felt like the pandemic was going to take so much away from the Olympics. It would have been, it would have been not as fun to have it last year as it is going to be this year, even though it's still going to be run a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I didn't really feel anything. The, the main thing that I actually felt when it was postponed is, they're going to be, I was nervous. They were going to have to make us requalify and remake the Olympic team. You know, after you just put your 
heart's performance on the line to make the Olympic team. And then you're, you know, you're preparing for the Olympics and then it gets postponed. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh no, do I have to make the team again? Like, do I basically have to train as hard as I was and build up all this intensity to remake the Olympic team just so I can compete next year if it happens. But fortunately uh, the USOPC and everyone basically said, if, you know, if you selected teams, they are allowed to keep their spots and we'll just select for the other teams in the future. And USA Shooting loved the team that made it. So they were willing to keep it and stick with us. And it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because we're one of the first uh, Olympic teams, especially shooting since we were decided so long ago that has had not just a year, but basically almost a year and a half to prepare ourselves for this big of an event, which is kind of crazy thinking that we only had four months before and now we had basically 18. So, so you're basically 2020 Olympians shooting in the 2021 Olympics. Yeah, (laughs) basically. (laughs) You know, I was thinking earlier today, how are you supposed to feel about when you live in 10 days? At nine days, uh, actually, uh, if it if it's the thirteenth, I believe I leave in six days. I I leave in less than a week for the Olympics. All right, less than a week. How are you supposed? To, how do you feel? I mean, do you feel nervous? Do you feel like I'm ready to go because I'm going to win this? I mean, how do you feel when it's when it's time to go? Um, I as of right now, I mean, all I'm feeling is nerves. Or nerves. I guess they're not really nerves. They're more just kind of like excitement. This is, this is kind of what I've thought about happening to me ever since I started the Olympic discipline. Kind of ever since I started shooting. Like I, I wanted to represent my country in some way, and I'm finally getting to do it. I've already, I've already gotten to do it at World Cups, but this is the biggest stage that you can possibly compete at and represent your country at in your sport. So. I'm really just feeling excited and just kind of ready to start it more than anything because we've had so long to prepare for it. It's kind of like I kind of want it to happen sooner than it's supposed to. And this is the first actual event that I'm going to be able to shoot all flash targets in an event, which is the neatest thing ever because flash targets just explode and you just get this initial just awesome excitement when you see that target explode so and that's going to be the whole match not just finals so it's it's definitely a lot of excitement more than nerves and i i honestly just can't wait to get over there and get started it don't matter how hard you hit those targets it looks like you hit them hard every time oh yeah i had a lot of people kind of saying what chokes are you using and i'm like they're special targets don't don't worry yeah yeah so uh, Derek posted something online about where you could go to keep up with this. Is, is that where we keep up with you as well? Yeah, I believe so. All of our scores should be posted to the same location. And if there, if NBC um, is view, is showing us live, it should be showing everyone kind of on the same channel. Just we have three ranges, um, not just one. So I don't know if they're going to like designate times or like kind of just stack them all in order for um, live feed or anything like that. But yeah, anything that Derek shares about like where to follow him and his scores along. Mine should be right there as well. Okay. Who is your teammate in the mixed team event? My teammate will actually be Brian Burroughs. So the team, the mixed team was selected from part two trials, how you finished overall and Derek won men's and Kaylee won women's. So they are partnered together and both Brian and I took second for our respective divisions. So we will be partnered together. I got you. All right, I talked to Sean Mainland uh, at the U.S. Open, and he said that you're now shooting a Kohler. What model? What model are you shooting, and how long have you been shooting that? So my model of Kohler is actually a Max Skeet. It's when I bought the gun because uh, when I bought the gun, it was kind of a going into college gift from my parents. Mm-hmm. So I got it as a senior in high school, actually, and so. I kind of got it just because I didn't really know what what I really wanted to get into. I was still on the fence about doing international trap full time. I still wanted to shoot all the other disciplines. 
I was going to college for shooting, so I knew I had to have a good all-around gun, and I was shooting a Browning Synergy beforehand. Mm -hmm. So we went with the Max Skeet with a low-profile rib, and it was very adjustable. I could fit it however I wanted to. We got an adjustable comb with it, and we actually fit it to me so it has a custom stock on it. And it definitely gave me my dues when I first tried it out. I was not, you know, shooting anywhere where I thought I should have been with a brand new gun that fits me perfectly. But with the relationship that I've built with it over the years, I mean, it's just been such a blessing. Um, Kohler has been magnificent with getting me any repairs I need done on it, um, upgrading it if they have any upgrades to do with it. They actually engraved the Olympic rings on the bottom of my receiver to kind of commemorate me going to the Olympics, which was super sweet of them to do. And it's just been a great gun ever since. And I've never truly had any problems with it other than, you know, normal wear and tear on a gun or just some minor problems. So it's, it's just been so great to have. And I love representing the company and Sean has just been great. And Derek's been great getting to know as well since he shoots a Kohler also. So it, it's been awesome ha spending the last six years with basically my best friend on a, on a shooting range. Yeah. You're also now on team winchester which is a very support where they're very supportive of shooting sports and a great company to be associated with as you know how excited are you about this partnership with them i am absolutely like over the moon about it just jumping up and down for joy winchester has been such a blessing to me with always making sure I have ammunition, making sure I have any sort of clothes I need to represent them, helping me out basically with media stuff, just always being there for me to call them, like never missing a beat. They have just been wonderful. Uh, Mr. Jason has been just such a great guy to get to know. And I actually got to meet the whole Winchester team that I never met face to face before until last fall, which was awesome to go down and kind of just chill out with them and shoot some pheasants down at Nilo farms down in Illinois. And it, it was just awesome. They're such a great company and almost family to be a part of at this point. I mean, we definitely have a professional relationship with me being a sponsored athlete, but they, they've just taken such good care of me that it's, you know, I, I can ask them for anything, you know, and they can definitely do the same of me if they need any media content or anything that they need from me. So it's, it's been such a great partnership and I really hope to continue with them in the future. Right. Are there any other sponsors, people, organizations you'd like to thank? I would definitely like to thank Ranger. They partnered with me back in 2018, and now it's kind of just if I need anything, I can reach out to them, which I haven't needed anything for a while, but they just reached out to me and asked me if I needed anything for the Olympics, and I said if you would like to send over the lenses I use the most since they're kind of getting a little bit beat up from wear and tear, I said that would be great, and they shipped brand new lenses to me and even a brand new frame for just in case if anything happens and I lose anything going over to Tokyo. So they, they've been awesome and kind of just a huge shout out to my new genetics company because they have been amazing with me asking off for months at a time. I had to take a whole month off for going to Italy and I've, I'm about to be a whole month and a half off for preparing and going to the Olympics. And I've been called from the CEO of the company and the owner, and they've just been over the moon with me going to the Olympics. And they've, they've just been awesome letting me have the time off I need to in order to prepare. So it's yeah. that everyone's been great. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's the support of all the people that make everything possible, you know, from, from the sponsors all the way to friends, family, and, and coworkers. I mean, without those people supporting you, it'd be hard to do what you're wanting to do. So absolutely. I so. completely agree. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on, spending some time with me. I wish you the best of luck over there. Uh, I hope you bring home the gold for sure. And, uh, and we'll be watching you.
Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And <laughs> I can't wait to represent Team USA myself and also the USA when I'm over there. And of course, all my other companies behind me. So thank you so much for having me on. And it was great talking with you. All right. See you, Maddie. Yep. Yeah.